So hi everyone. Um, we have a great topic today. What Anime taught me about Kubernetes and tech career. Oh, sorry, tech careers. Um, so lovely to see you all here today. Um, it is really great to be talking about particularly this topic, I think, in Japan, very fitting, because I originally um, really created this session to be an homage to, uh, to anime and, and all of these um, cultural things as well. And I did the session in um, KubeCon um, Valencia before as well, and uh, it was really great to share my passion for Kubernetes and anime there as well, so lovely to be here today. So here is a Venn diagram of Kubernetes and anime. Some people usually ask me like, okay, what do these things have in common? What, 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 are you, what are you actually talking about? Well, I think this Venn diagram really describes what I'm here talking about. And I think a good way to put it that if you know anime and Kubernetes, like if you're familiar with both, at least to a certain extent, you are absolutely in the perfect place. You, are, you have found your people, amazing to see you here. Uh, this is the session for you essentially. If you know Kubernetes, but you do not know that much about anime, then um, great, you will learn a lot more about anime today. Um, but if you know anime, but are new to Kubernetes, then you're gonna learn about Kubernetes today. So this is how the Venn diagram essentially works in this case. Um, but if you don't know either, if you don't know nothing about either one of these topics, then you might be a tiny bit lost <laughs> throughout the presentation, uh, but just hold on and stick for the roller coaster uh, and see how it goes. Uh, and welcome, um, happy to have you here as well if you're learning about all of these things for the first time. So a bit about me. So as mentioned there, I'm Annie. Uh, I'm a senior product marketing manager at Kamunda. Um, I'm a CNCF ambassador as well as an Azure MVP. Also do a lot of other things such as Kubernetes CNCF meetup co-organizing, um, uh, uh, being the host of a podcast and producing it and the startup coaching and so forth. But that's kind of like the standard uh, introduction to me. And I think much more relevant to this session is actually the fact that I have watched way too much anime in my life, which kind of then uh, puts me maybe I'm not an expert. I don't think you can ever be an expert. You can't see everything. Uh, but at the same time, um, I, stopped what, uh, I stopped counting how many animes I have finished at the around 150 mark. So I think that maybe gives some kind of an idea. So I will have uh, over my uh, 10,000 hours of training in for watching anime. So hopefully that helps you uh, there a bit. Um, so what is this session? Because it is a bit of an interesting session, an interesting concept. So it is particularly a, a beginner session. So there won't be any deep diving Kubernetes here. Um, we will start from the scratch essentially. And most importantly, this session is actually meant to be a relaxed and humorous take on two, on two fun topics that I'm both very passionate about. So that's the goal here, is to have fun, is to just discover new things, and that's mainly it. And hopefully, obviously, learn a few things along the way, but I think the fun and experiencing kind of things that we are all passionate about is the main point here. Uh, so we have an agenda today. So introduction, uh, almost already done. So we are making good headway here. That's always great to see. Uh, and then we have, next up, we have the Badly Illustrated Anime Fans Guide to Kubernetes. Why the Badly Illustrated Anime Fans Guide to Kubernetes? Well, because there's this legendary Illustrated Children's Guide to Kubernetes around, which I modeled this from. And um, to be honest, since I didn't like illustrate this fully, uh, that's why it's a badly illustrated uh, uh, Anime Fans Guide to Kubernetes, but a lot more anime than the, than the Children's Guide to Kubernetes. Uh, then we're going to run through the Kubernetes components very quickly, and then we're going to have 10 lessons learned from anime in general, more of a life lessons rather than technical lessons as well. Yeah, but I'm very excited to be here and get started. So we start from a situation where you have, uh, you can imagine a anime character. They are alone in the world, but they are surrounded by things that they are uh, kind of familiar with, but they also don't want to interact with too much. Um, so they are surrounded by things, but it's all a bit too stressful, all a bit too kind of, um, taking a toll on their mental health and so forth. Uh, so for example, you have Naruto in, in Naruto, who is in the beginning of the story, it's just a beginning, uh, beginner uh, anime hero who kicks off um, by being in the village, 
being surrounded by people but not really knowing how to interact with them, not really knowing how to, how to work with them and so forth. Similarly, we have like um, Sona from iShield21, for example, as well. Feels a bit out of water in her, in his own world. Feels a bit like a uh, outsider. And then we have other classic examples such as Xingzi from Neon Genesis Evangelion and host of others. Anime is filled with these for sure. So how does this all relate to the Kubernetes and the tech world? Well, actually, this similar type of situation is quite common. So if you have an app that's a very, very simple Python app, for example, uh, it's a, uh, written in Python, it has environment that they rely on, so it has might have web server, readable file system, Python runtime, and so forth. And if they're just left alone in their, in, in their computer, they might feel in similar ways as our anime hero. So they're surrounded by applications that they don't want to integrate, interact with, that are messing up their things, and it's kind of they are alone feeling in the world. So the app, in this, the Python app in this case, is in a similar place as our really beginner uh, anime heroes here are as well. So that's when we need containers. So uh, in this example, when a Naruto goes to the ninja school, the shinobi school, when uh, Sona finds their football team, they start to find their place in the world. They get kind of surrounded by environment that they understand, that they know, and that they can really start to thrive in. Uh, and this is similar to a container. So that lonely, uh, but kind of surrounded by messiness, uh, simple Python app will now be in a container which gives it isolated context where the app together with its environment can then run. So isolated containers do need to be managed and connect to the outside world. So, but there is still a lot of challenges that come just by purely containerizing your application. And so is actually our main characters from, for example, Naruto as well, just attending the school won't solve all of the issues that they have, uh, but they need a bit more to really thrive in the world. So there we have Kubernetes that comes into place. So that's when our anime heroes, then they start finding themselves by going, for example, to the team. So here we have an example of Naruto finding his place with uh, Kakahashi's team and Sona in the American football team and so forth, and really starting to understand what they're doing. And also that team becomes greater than the sum of its part because it becomes actually, you know, multiple uh, entities, multiple characters working together. And this applies to Kubernetes as well. So Kubernetes, uh, as we're all here probably familiar with, um, is a project that focuses on building a robust platform for running thousands of containers in production. And it is a container orchestration system. So as you see here, the team is helping uh, the, the anime heroes thrive, and so is Kubernetes, the containers, as well as the applications within the thrive truly. Uh, so this is kind of the final home in here. But obviously just having a home and just having a team to work with is not enough uh, completely. You need a host of other things to make you a successful Python app or a successful anime hero. So then you have to, um, for example, uh, use labels. So uh, when you learn new skills and you're accumulating more of them, you need to start naming them and different team members will also have to have specified roles as well. Uh, in the Naruto works, for example, Saruku Rahir is a medic, uh, so that gives them clear purpose and role and a label to work within that team. Um, and then Kubernetes as well does this, so it uses labels as name tags to identify things, so it can query based on these labels, and labels are open-ended so that you can use them to identify roles, stability, or other important attributes. So really, we can start seeing that actually, yeah, a lot of the Kubernetes world principles are actually similar in anime, and we can actually start learning from both of them together. Uh, now, there's obviously, you know, uh, other things that are happening as well, like when you're finding your team, you're working together. So um, in here, we have an example of pod. So in Kubernetes, pod uh, represents the runnable uh, unit of work. Usually you will have a, usually a single container inside a pod, but there are cases where you might have more inside the pods as well. So it's the smallest deployable unit of computing uh, that you can create and manage in Kubernetes. Um, so in here you have this unit that you can send out and you can have working out there for you. Uh, so as you progress in your story, just Naruto does in his life, 
Um, you need to learn new moves. So what kind of moves do you learn? Quite fast usually, Naruto particularly. You start to learn cloning techniques. And this is obviously very applicable to the Kubernetes words because the replica sets are such a big and important part of uh, Kubernetes as well. So you need to learn how to clone yourself in order to take full advantage of the various, uh, to really beat the various enemies that you face. So replica sets provide logic for scaling uh, the pot up and down, and it can be used for rolling deploys. Um, and they're used to main purposes to maintain a stable set of replica pods running at any given time. And as such, it is often used to guarantee the availability of a specified number of identical pods. So there you can see that you know Naruto has done there, replicated himself in this image as well. So after you have all these things in place, you have a team, you have some techniques, um, you have uh, all of these things that help you thrive as an anime hero. What do you need next? Um, well, then you need to connect with the outside world. Well, you need services. So um, as, as Naruto has to you know, interact with other villagers, with other teams, with the Yani Are units and so forth, Kubernetes needs services. So when you, you have services, you can discover others and they can discover you. So this comes from the fact that each pod has their own IP address, but because it's an ephemeral system, uh, the all pods come and go and so does the IP addresses. So service gives um, your pod a stable IP so that they can use, be used consistently. Um, and so for example, there is cluster IP, node port, headless and load balancer. So as Naruto interacts with the uh, services kind of in his village and everything and has his own team and identify themselves. Um, now there you can in Kubernetes do a similar thing as well. Now as you progress even more you start accumulating a lot of gear, objects, you start accumulating knowledge. You have all of these things that you are as, as Ninja would be lugging around, carrying around uh, in the world so uh, you start needing storage and volumes, as you do in Kubernetes as well. You can't just deal without storage, uh, which is in the Kubernetes world, is then volumes. So you need to kind of figure those things in your journey as well. So um, as I think it's quite easy to understand there, there we have some weapons and gear and you need to store them somewhere. So you do need in Kubernetes as well. So um, world volumes is where this comes in. So they are a separate object defined within the context of the pod that is mounted to a particular container and it can be mounted to a different part or it can be mounted to a particular container as well. It's a way for containers can access and store information. Um, and then uh, as you move through this world as an anime hero, for example, you start to realize that, um, you know, your team is great, you have the storage, you have all of these things and you're working towards these goals. And then you actually realize that, oh, uh, working in a team is great, but sometimes you might need your own privacy. Sometimes you might need your own time. So that's when you need uh, to, for example, take a moment to meditate, to find some peace from your teammates. Naruto and Sasuke were always kind of fighting about. Uh, so then as Kubernetes does as well, so we have namespaces. So they provide you a bit of, little bit of privacy and finding a peace and order within yourself. For example, here, Sasuke is meditating. So you can kind of think about that because it is essentially namespace is a virtual cost cluster inside a cluster because it functions as a grouping mechanism inside Kubernetes. Um, so uh, replica sets, volumes, and everything can easily collaborate together with uh, the namespace and it provides a degree of isolation from the other parts. So as Sasuke needs to sometimes cool off as Naruto does, that's what namespace offers to your small Python uh, application as well there. Now, after all of these things, you are starting to be ready to take on the world. Uh, you, are, uh, you have found your home, you have your team, you have your storage, you have all of these things that you can take then further in your anime journey, as well as now in your Kubernetes journey, and really kind of focus on them as well. Uh, so that you can become the shinobi that you always meant to be as well. Now, that was kind of like the path of the beginner anime hero, as well as that small Python uh, app. Uh, and then we're now going to move on to Kubernetes components. So here is a very common image from the Kubernetes documentation. So it is the Kubernetes cluster architecture there. So a Kubernetes cluster contains, uh, consists of a set of worker machines called nodes that run on the container as the application. 
So every cluster has at least one worker node and the worker nodes host the pods that are the components of the application workload and the control plane then manages the worker nodes and the pods in the cluster. Um, and then the control plane is kind of, you can see, think of it as the one who's giving the orders out. And then the pods are the, you know, the nodes are the ones who are then executing the orders and doing the heavy lifting and kind of working the uh, orders that the control then plane gives. So you might be wondering, how does this look like in the anime world? Well, this is exactly how it looks like. So we have uh, Kakahashi there giving the orders out to Naruto, Sasuke and um, uh, Sakura, and they are going to be executing all those orders and doing the heavy lifting, as well as then we have Hokage there in the high level as a bonus, giving even higher level of introductions as the cloud provider API, which is moving nicely there. So then uh, we have another way of looking at it. It's the Japanese task force from Death Note, because I think this is a particularly good example, because you have L really giving the uh, the task force members guidance and they really doing the heavy lifting and kind of just controlling everything from behind. Now, this isn't maybe applicable to every uh, anime team because if you look at the straw hats, technically Luffy would be the controlled plane there. But I would say that, you know, uh, all of the other straw hats might not always do exactly as Luffy says. So it's always, a, it, it might be a bit uh, off for um, interpretation, but who knows. So that's it for the Kubernetes components. I think that was nice. And then we have 10 lessons learned from Anima. So these are the life lessons, that portion that we are going to move on to. So I think a very overarching theme across all of Anima is the importance of team, uh, which has come up today many times. So we have One Piece, we have Naruto. All of these are very focused on the team. And the team is the important thing that helps you move forward. Um, so the team becomes stronger together and not just the individuals who are contributing to it. So what's the next level? Uh, like in tech world, everyone is individual talents are working to build together to build great applications or infrastructure. So that kind of applies there. But what's the next level then? Uh, well, if you could, you could combine yourself into one big mecca. Uh, well, that's just, you know, one being that's working together. But then uh, that's kind of not likely, but if it was to happen, I think uh, recruiters particularly in the um, tech world are sometimes looking for these mechas around who would know everything to do. So we have there an image with, you know, all of these requirements that people should know when they're doing, when they're working, uh, but that doesn't always happen. And if you have actually all of these skills alone, just an individual person, that would particularly be a very much a unicorn uh, and incredible to see, but the team really makes the makes all of these skills happen possible. So we have lesson two, which is mysterious characters with a dark past. So these are always working around in anime world. So we have Sasuke there as a good uh, example of this. So they are characters that don't say much, almost never smile. Uh, they are a bit cold hearted. They, are, uh, they have become hardened thanks to their tragic past. Uh, but they also have a lot to contribute to the team because they have learned a lot through their past. Um, and the hardships have taught them a lot. So they're a bit moody and they do their own thing. So there's a lot of examples, I think, but we have to deal with these kind of people or we might be them, the people themselves uh, in the tech world as well. But I think a good example are sometimes people with the dark past and so forth could be cobalt or mainframe coders and, and them having kind of these kind of situations to, to manage in the team dynamics. Uh, another, I think, really important lesson from the anime world that we can take is self-development. So when you're fighting all of these villains in anime, you usually have to level up really fast. So you have situations where um, you really have to kind of get up to the next level really quickly. Now, this is usually done by going to a cave or time machine um, or, or something like that, where you just then emerge with all of your talents and all of your great new skills. And now we can think about this essentially, for example, getting your manager to buy you a ticket to Cube Day Japan or KubeCon, and you come to the event, you learn a lot of new skills, you learn new things, and then you emerge victorious and with all of your new skills and talents out from there. And actually, usually when you go to the cave, you also might learn uh, you might also get a new outfits and everything. So what could be better than having a new uh, t-shirt or a piece of swag, something else uh, from a conference that you can use um, to showcase your level of growth, um, as well as maybe having a LinkedIn badge, a certification badge that showcases, hey, you learned this. Uh, 
it's all also super important to take time to relax. So uh, with quite often with animes, there's always the, the beach episode where you then take a moment to uh, away from the hustle and bustle of the world and you actually just relax and take some holiday. Um, and also if the anime, world, anime heroes who are saving the world have the time to go to the beach and, and do these kind of activities, everyone here has the time uh, to take some time off as well to focus on their well-being. And I think a really uh, interesting um, other thing here is that, for example, feature freezes can kind of have the same uh, effect as these. So when you have a feature freeze, you don't do new uh, features, you actually just work uh, on the technical legacy and, and make sure the technical depth is all uh, figured out. So the plot line is on hold and the episodes are on hold, So, but you need to take some time off. Uh, and after you get back to work, you need to then be ready for everything that then when the danger comes back, you are ready. So then you need to be ready to jump out of the window at a moment's notice when the danger, danger comes in uh, and approaches you. And I think this really highlights the importance of monitoring and alerts and good visibility into your environments in the tech world and in Kubernetes world, um, because you need to be able to know when there is something that you need to take action on. And obviously in here, our heroes are taking action very fast. Uh, and I think that's also important to remember in the tech world, because if we have a really good monitoring set up, that's not enough. We actually have to take action um, on, on those alerts to get further. Uh, lesson number six, so we have importance of documentation. Um, so you need to know what your team members are doing and you need to understand the historical context around it. Uh, so what could be better than yelling out your every move when you are doing them? Uh, um, so like you're yelling banka or kamehameha whenever you need to do a move. And then um, out loud, obviously. So the bad guys might be able to tell what's happening from there, but luckily there are no bad guys in the development room. So that means that uh, just yelling these out loud is only beneficial. There's no backsides or draw drawbacks to it at all. Um, another big thing is enduring in long fights. So you need to have the stamina to fight uh, long fights and endure. And I think tech world is no longer to big projects, never ending uh, kind of features and everything and building these things. As so are uh, the Dragon Ball Z characters very used to long fights as well. So it's always a marathon, not a sprint, but it might be a sprint or a marathon made up of sprints as well there. And I think the one thing that we need to remember that when we go to these events and we get inspired or we do anything, we get inspired, oh, I'm going to try that project, that project's going to add this thing, then uh, it might get a bit too complicated, uh, your tech environment, and then um, you might become the monster that you despise. So this is a common theme in anime as well. Naruto, uh, Ichigo from Bleach and so forth, they kind of have this devil from inside that might take them over. Uh, so we must remember this as technology professionals, professionals as well, so that we don't kind of dive too deep into everything possible and then overcomplicate our environments uh, and kind of become the monster um, there. And obviously, for example, having too many service messes that are colliding with each other might be a thing that you might look out for and so forth. Then we have the next lesson, which is ridiculous power scaling. And I think this is a very common theme in anime, as well as in um, Kubernetes as well. So Kubernetes is built for scale. So you can actually start seeing it here. Like, yeah, sure, Kubernetes actually is quite applicable to anime. Both of our about hyperscaling and so forth. And then we have lesson 10, which is always have a snack at hand. And I think this is very understandable and, uh, and makes sense for everyone. I get very hungry and hangry sometimes. Um, so do the anime hero. So and that's something that we should remember in our work as well, to always have a snack at hand, hydrate, drink water, and keep those things in mind. Um, but across all of these lessons, we have one bonus lesson left. So the most important lesson is believe in yourself. And I think this is a very important thing for every one of us to remember to get when you want to get faster and get stronger and fulfill your potential, just believe that you can do it and you can make it through. Um, so if you're feeling uh, hopeless and need help, you can just go Super Saiyan, which means that you're just going to start flashing out colors, grow out your hair, all of these things, uh, and then you're going to become super powerful and it's going to be all smooth sailing from there. And if things go a bit too far and you actually kind of end up uh, going a bit too uh, <laughs> intense on the hair growth uh, and on, on your growth, uh, no worries, you're just going to become the most powerful being in the whole universe. Uh, you might lose your hair, but that's totally fine. You are very powerful and it's a sign of that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, are there any questions? 
usually this session doesn't have any. And everyone's <laughs> always like very clear. You can talk, come talk to me after the session, of course, as well, if you have any questions. Yeah, thanks. Or is there a question? It's an anime question, not yeah. a Kubernetes question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what would you recommend as a good starting point for somebody who doesn't know anything about anime? What should they look at first? Um, well, honestly, I usually recommend to look into what kind of genres do you usually like and then going from there. So like if you like, if you are watching Marvel movies normally or something like that, then maybe going for some um, classical action ones. So Naruto or Bleach or One Piece or something like that. If you're more into romance genres, there's a lot of great romance stories as well. Um, and I think easy entrances are anything from Studio Chipley as well. So Spirited Away and all of these kind of things. And my particular favorites are anything from Makoto Shinkai because they're absolutely gorgeous as far as like the uh, cinematographer goes as well. So there's a lot of examples. <laughs> Thank you. I only get anime questions after this session, no <laughs> Kubernetes questions. But that's fine, I like it, it's good. Any questions? Okay, so I, I have a question. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, Okay. Mm. Uh, I think each, each country has their own animation. Yeah. Uh, but why why do you uh, select or why do you <laughs> like <laughs> Japanese animation? Oh, that's a that's a good question. I think for me, so I've always really loved stories in every format possible. So I absolutely love um, like traditional Western movies as well. I love books. I love nowadays. I read a lot of webtoons as well. So from Korea as well and everything. Um, so for me, anime I particularly like because every country and every culture has their own kind of set of cliches as well and tropes that they kind of repeat and I think it's always fun to discover a new one from a new kind of culture a new kind of art form um, so that's really nice and I do think there's such a variety and a great amount of storytelling in anime and it's a really great medium and I think particularly why I like anime I think uh, because it's um, such a good um, animation form so it becomes kind of that you can have these much more fantastical and whimsical worlds than let's say if you have actors playing out things because if you have humans kind of already like as humans th some things might seem a bit ridiculous but if it's animated it kind of becomes maybe easier to have things that are uh, kind of more imaginative and more creative so uh, I think that's a really great way of looking at it. at least that's from my perspective but I think there is exactly as many reasons to like anime as there are anime watchers in the world so it depends always. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Any question? Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah.